Thanks. Um, so it's me again. Uh, this time not as an ETP and a board member, but as a nanobiotic CEO. So our company is a public company, so I invite you to go to our website to look at our annual report to see every risk linked to any forward-looking statement or even statement that could make that I could make or could say during this presentation that are, of course, subjected to a number of risks. So everything you've seen up to now is nanomedicine, obviously, but nanomedicine which is delivering a biological function, meaning you taking a biological action and you deliver it better through nanomedicine, through drug, through liposomes, through different objects. Here, it's not biology, it's physics. We are not using biology, but we are delivering nanoparticles that are the active principle itself, meaning we're bringing physics into cells. And what physics means for cancer? That means a lot, because a cancer cell, a mammalian cell in general, is not equipped to resist to physics. You will always find a dose of physics to kill a mammalian cell. And when it comes to cancer, killing cell is very important. So what are we doing? We're working in the field of radiotherapy. Why that? Because radiotherapy is a really uh, widely used uh, cancer treatment. More than 50 to 60 percent of patients will receive radiotherapy during the course of their treatment. And radiotherapy is so widely used because that's a very powerful treatment. You can kill any kind of cancer cell with radiotherapy. So what's the limitation of radiotherapy? Why can't we kill all the tumor with radiotherapy? And the answer is really simple. Here you look at the volume where we have a tumor in the middle and we send some X-ray beam onto the volume. And you see on the green track of the X-ray photon that you can not only go in the tumor but you also diffuse into the body. And you're creating damages in yellow on the picture before the tumor, after the tumor and within the tumor. So really the key question about radiotherapy to really maximize its efficacy is how to improve the dose within the tumor without improving the dose in surrounding LC tissue. That's kind of the holy grail of radiotherapy. And if we can do this, then we can certainly bring some benefit to patient in meaning, I mean meaningful benefit in different clinical situations. So to do so, we've developed nanoparticle to go into cells. And that's the only reason why we needed nanoparticle, is to be small enough to go into cells. But being small is not enough in that kind of applications, because we need two other key functions. And the first one being the ability of nanoparticle to absorb X-ray, because you want to absorb X-ray to deliver more dose into the tumor. And of course, those products, they are injected into humans, so you also need to have a non-toxic product. So among all the products we could have chosen, we have chosen the hafnium oxide nanoparticles because they exhibit the best benefit-risk benefit ratio for that kind of applications. So not going into details, but we can expand later if you wish. When you have such a nanoparticle within the tumor, you apply the appropriate and normal dose with the normal equipment and normal protocol to patient, delivering an average dose within the tumor and LC tissue. But where you will find nanoparticle within the tumor, then you will increase largely the dose deposited within the tumor. And therefore, you can increase the therapeutic window for radiotherapy. That's a very simple physical principle. But to deliver it into the tumor, we had to develop three different products, and today we're going to focus on the first one, which is under clinical trial. It is a product what, that we deliver directly into the tumor or via an intra-arterial route. And for that particular tumor, uh, product, sorry, uh, we can target different diseases like hepatocellular cancer, but also esophageal cancer, rectal cancer, some of the prostate cancer, and the first indication we have chosen is soft tissue sarcoma. Why soft tissue sarcoma? Because obviously there is an unmet medical need, an important one for patient and healthcare system around this disease, and also because that is a disease that is helping us to de-risk the entire project. What can we say about de-risking the project, or what are the key things we want to demonstrate into clinic to be sure that the product uh, it is safe and it is working? First, you want to be sure that the safety is okay, regardless of the quantity you're injecting in the body. 
Then the feasibility of intratumoral injection, regardless of the size of the tumor and regardless of the structure of the tumor. And the dispersion is also very important, but more than a dispersion within the tumor, it is the concentration within the tumor versus the concentration into the surrounding LC tissue. That's the key point about the technology, about the product, because you want to have the product at the right place at the right moment, but not in the surrounding LC tissue. And of course, the efficacy, which is dependent on the indication and the expected benefit for patient. So we have chosen a population in soft tissue sarcoma uh, where they develop tumor into limbs, extremities. And uh, we have aggressive tumor or tumor with a bad prognostic. And the goal, if possible, in this patient is to treat the tumor to make it operable. And that's really the goal of radiotherapy in such a population. We try to shrink or to kill the tumor, but not necessarily shrink, but at least to kill it enough to make it operable. Because we know that if we can make a good surgery, then there is a good chance for a good treatment and maybe also for a cure. But when we look at the usual results of radiotherapy, which is presented here, that's a reference, they are targeting two endpoints. First one being the tumor evolution on the abscess and um, on the left, so the tumor is shrinking, on the right, it's increasing and also the pathological response rate, which is the number of cells that you have destroyed through radiotherapy. And as you can see, in that kind of patient population with bad prognostic, you have a widely spread um, efficacy of radiotherapy. But at the end, what we want is to be on the upper left of this curve, uh, of the graph, sorry, to bring benefit through radiotherapy and to try to make the patient operable. So in our protocol, we don't change anything. We just had one injection of NBTXR3, the product, intratumorally, uh, the day before the first session of radiotherapy. Then the patient is going under radiotherapy for 25 sessions, and after a recovery period, then we go for surgery if feasible. And the primary endpoint, of course, are safety and also feasibility of injection. And in terms of efficacy, uh, we're looking as secondary endpoint into the pathological response and the tumor size evolution. We have, of course, as it is a phase one, made some kind of increased dose of the product. So we are gradually from cohort number one to, to four, increasing level one to four, sorry. We're increasing the volume of particle injected, the quantity of particle injected, starting with a very low dose, 2.5% of the tumor volume. And you see here the 12 patients that have been already treated in this, um, in this trial. So not going into details, what we have to notice is that we have a wild dispersion in tumor size and therefore a large dispersion in quantity of product injected and a lot of varieties of soft tissue sarcoma tumor. We had a, a tumor which is going up to 3.6 kilograms, which is a very big tumor. So we had to inject a lot of products. So the first point is intratumoral injection. In all patients, it has been demonstrated to be feasible, safe, uh, with no uh, global anesthesia, just local uh, anesthesia for such a purpose. Here we have a unique feature of this product. You know, I said that it is designed to absorb X-ray, that's the mode of action, meaning that you can see the product using a CT scan. And that's what you see here, 24 hours after injection of the product, you see the tumor with the red circle, and within the tumor, you see the white spots. And the white spots are the nanoparticles dispersed within this tumor. And let me show you just a, a small movie, two seconds. So here you see the patient with the 3.6 kilogram tumor, uh, 24 hours after injection, and the yellow part is the tumor, and the, the blue, I'm sorry, the, the pink part is the nanoparticle. And here what is important to see is that there is no nanoparticle outside the tumor, no leakage into LC tissue, which is very important for the safety and for the efficacy of the product. And this has been confirmed in every patient we have treated with feasibility, dispersion in the tumor, but also no leakage in surrounding LC tissue. And more importantly, 
uh, we looked at the CT scan also after all sessions of radiotherapy prior to surgery to check where the particle were. And in all patients, we found that the particles are still within the tumor, even when the tumor is shrinking, which you see in patient number two here on the slide, the particles are staying in with no leakage outside. And in terms of safety, uh, so far, and has, has been seen in all preclinical models, we did not see any uh, major toxicity of this product. In other terms, no grade three or four toxicity uh, related to, to the product. So when we look at the summary of the secondary endpoint linked to potential efficacy, uh, if we compare it to the reference we have shown previously, all the patients we have treated so far are in the right spot at the right place, meaning with no tumor evolution, no growth in the tumor, uh, rather on the other side, which, which is shrinkage of the tumor, and in some of them we had some good pathological response and even some complete pathological response. So let's say that when we look at what has been achieved so far, um, we have achieved a good step for nanobiotics, a good step for nano X-ray. Because in such a viable tumor, in such a big tumors, we've been able to demonstrate that so far the product is safe, the injection is feasible, and the product is staying within the tumor, not leaking into a LC tissue and we're starting to see efficacy even at the low level. But that's just the phase one, so we cannot say anything more than what has been said, and we need to go farther, of course. And um, after those good results, and also the authorization we received by NSM in France, we are starting a second clinical trial in head and neck cancer patients. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Questions? Uh, Always you asking questions, right? That, that's a nice result. So just probably I, I, I missed catching um, the why you are looking at nano uh, particles when you are injecting intratumorally. Uh, if the job can be done with micron-sized uh, several hundreds of microns particles, I mean, what benefit okay. you're getting? So you can't do this with big particles because you need the particles to be delivered within the cells because when you increase the dose around nanoparticles, you don't increase the dose within the old tumor. You increase the dose around nanoparticles by ninefold. And if you have big nanoparticles that cannot go into cells, uh, then you will just increase the dose outside the cell. So you will have spoiled dose. So we really need to have nanoparticles that can efficiently reach uh, nearby the nucleus to, to be efficient. So there is a limit in size which is not or less efficient. Of course, we have used different size during the development to be sure that we are using the right size. But we see that when we are too small or too big, it's not working anymore. You probably partly answered the question. What about the final fate um, of the part? So that's not a single answer question. Um, we have chosen inert, non-degradable particle because mm. the risk was lower than having degradable uh, particles. Um, you have several situations. You, you have situations where, like soft tissue sarcoma, the goal is to make surgery. And uh, so when you will make surgery, you will remove the particle with the remaining tumors. But there is other clinical situation where you don't want to make surgery, like when you're doing final treatment or when you treat a, a, a tumor bed, for example. So here there is different phase for nanoparticles. Most of the time when the tumor start starting to die, then macrophages can come and they are cleaning the area from dead cells, but also from nanoparticle. Then the particle will go back into the, the systemic distribution of the body and most likely will end into liver and spleen for long-term elimination. That's why when we looked at the uh, toxicity profile of such a product, of course we look at it from a local perspective, but also from a systemic perspective. I think that's sure. really important. Yes, and very to be sure smart. that we are covering every aspect. But you, you have to remember, remember that when it goes back into systemic, that it'll probably carry with it some junk that it picked up from for sure from the yes. tumor as well as the systemic yeah. system. But anyway, you've got the you've got the picture anyway. So. Yes. <clears throat> If 
Thank you.